I'm leaving tomorrow night to drive to Dallas to begin the occupation of the private run for profit Federal Reserve main bank for a five state area. It kicks off officially Friday evening, six o'clock in Dallas. People are going to be camping out there, staying there, focusing on the monopoly capitalists who want to bring collectivism to our society. People are going to stay there after I leave. I'm then going to go to Houston on Saturday, San Antonio on Sunday. And then uh, as the people mass in Dallas, I will, will return, as MacArthur said. So this is very, very exciting. I'll talk about it later in the transmission with a icon of liberty, G. Edward Griffin, author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, who's been fighting the private Federal Reserve banking cartel for close to 50 years. We're going to be talking to him about how important it is to not just protest capitalism, which is the opposite of the globalists, but to actually protest their monopoly system. That is coming up in the second half of the news tonight, so stay with us. But first, let's get into the news here. Well, Daryl Issa, the congressman, has told Eric Holder, admit you knew. Admit you lied, because now they've got the emails, the witnesses that Holder was running, the ATF, the FBI, the DEA, and four other agencies, in not only ATF ordering gun shops to sell guns, but two ATF agents that were coming in and selling them to Mexican drug cartels. And we'll give you the rest of the story on that uh, in a moment. Now, a top CBS News reporter says the White House screamed and swore at her over Fast and Furious and that they're actually panicking over the fact that this could bring down this mafia White House. Now, let me give you the rest of the story dealing with this. Celica Still, who's in federal prison for selling a couple shotguns, he's a former DEA agent, retired school teacher. They set him up. Six years ago on my show, he told me that Sinaloa was allowed to ship drugs in the United States and that Los Zetas that was trained at Fort Benning, Georgia, Mexican commandos, were going to have a fake defection to the drug cartels, but really it was a covert secret war against other cartels not laundering their money through the proper Mexican and U.S. banks. These YouTube videos are all posted. People have seen them. We covered it live on the radio at the time. And so that's how I knew two and a half years ago when Holder, the attorney general, started demonizing the Second Amendment and saying we've got to restrict gun ownership because of the problems in Mexico. I knew from Selling and others that they were already, even before Obama got in office, shipping guns into Mexico and drugs back in. Now in federal court, and it's in Texas papers, we're going to show you some of these articles, El Paso Times, Houston Chronicle, it's in the Hawaiian papers, it's in the Chicago Tribune. Here are some of the headlines. Operation Fast and Furious is just the tip of the iceberg. There's the head of the Sinaloa cartel, number two in command, but the head of the U.S. operation. And the feds have now come into court and said it's true, he worked for us. National security has been declared. Uh, here it is from over a month ago, documents Fed allegedly allowed Sinaloa cartel to move cocaine to the U.S. for information. That's now since been confirmed uh, in federal court. The Feds have declared national security. So the Sinaloa was hired to knock out competition. They were laundering their money through the proper banks. Uh, here's another one. Taxpayers paid for Fast and Furious plan to arm Sinaloa drug cartel. So again, it's not just guns directly shipped by ATF to Sinaloa. Sinaloa has been confirmed to be allowed, they're the main cartel along the Texas and Mexico border, to bring in around half of the $500 billion a year in drug money. The rest of the story is this is like Iran-Contra with the Reagan administration shipping guns down to Central and South America to drug cartels to knock out their competition and then ship the cocaine into the U.S. Business has always stayed the same. And that's why Issa... In this article, if you actually read the quotes out of Politico from uh, him as the chairman up there today speaking, he said, let me give you a chance, Holder, to come back. We know you made a mistake saying you didn't authorize and command this. Tell us you didn't know everything. It's okay. But you've been caught in perjury. Clarify this. 
He's not trying to catch him. He's just trying to score some political points. Because if it all comes out, it's going to be discovered. This was happening during the Bush administration as well. Obama went one further, blaming the Second Amendment to try to disarm the American would-be slaves. But that's, I mean, read the quote here. You can go to the end of the article uh, in, um, in Politico. This is Issa speaking. This is a man who carefully, if he doesn't like the question, answers it in the way he wants to, he said. He has every obligation to say, I may not have known about all the details, but of course I knew about Fast and Furious because I was briefed someone on it weekly because they have all the briefing minutes. He needs to come forward and at least admit that because right now he has said it's untrue and he needs to clarify before the committee. So they're giving him a way out. Look, the memos are all out. They're public. It's in federal filings. We're running the drugs in here. We're running the guns in. Come on, come out and say, you, you, look, we got to do something if you don't come out and give us some good bull. This goes back to Bush. Help us cover this up. And instead, Holder's going, no, you're all involved. I'm not saying jack crap. You're not going to get political points, Issa. Go ahead and bring it all out. Bring the whole system down. And that, my friends, is the rest of the story on that issue. And that is Fast and Furious. Let's shift gears into Occupy Wall Street movement, started by great grassroots people, but sins completely and totally uh, hijacked by the White House. That's now admitted that uh, the big unions and move on are all involved in it. Uh, the NYPD, uh, the mafia that runs New York, is whining right now uh, that there was a hefty price tag of millions of dollars. It's been so expensive to break people's arms and crack peaceful protesters uh, over the heads who, who dare protest Wall Street in some nebulous way. But, but, but wait, uh, you know, I heard this a week ago and thought, that, that's impossible, that's not true. But, but uh, one of my crew, Marcos, actually brought me the screenshot from jpmorganchase.com where they actually gave $4.6 million the day before the Occupy Wall Street movement was launched uh, to them basically uh, as a payoff. And of course, uh, we launched a protest the Fed movement a few months ago, and that ended up being a national story because the protesters that went out there in New York, even though it was just a few hundred of them, had already been surveilled on and reported on by the NYPD. And they admitted, yeah, we watch people that uh, protest uh, the Fed, uh, their paymasters. Now, Obama's trying to co-opt the Occupy Wall Street movement. The people on the ground are great. We've got reporters up there, Rob Jacobson and others. But the media, the dominant corporate di dying dinosaur media, but it's still dominant, kind of like a dead elephant in your living room, rotting everywhere. It, it's dominating your house. Uh, they are sitting there uh, giving attention to the George Soros people, acting like all of Occupy Wall Street just hates free market, anybody that has a dollar more than them and wants socialism and this whole list of demands of free education and all these imaginary uh, pipe dreams and more taxes to pay the bankers bailout money. Uh, but uh, there's a report in Reuters that Wall Street cash has now shifted from Romney to Obama. They own both political parties, but they always shift. You know, Mo McCain's not going to win, so they gave four or five times the money, depending on which bank it was, to Obama. Well, now in a real sign that Obama is in deep, deep doo-doo, uh, Wall Street cash shifts to Romney from Obama, uh, 10 to 1. And uh, this article uh, goes over... Uh, all of it, about a quarter of the um, $18 million that has been raised uh, is coming directly from Wall Street on that front. And so meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Uh, meanwhile, uh, our report is up on Drudge Report today. Why are Occupy Wall Street protesters repeating White House talking points? And then uh, the article uh, basically goes over that information. Continuing um, with this, Ron Paul tried to get a full audit, and he passed it in the House. It was killed in the Senate. So the Senate passed a partial, paltry, really ceremonial audit. And uh, Ron Paul says that it's only ceremonial, but it still allows him to grill Bernanke and others and have them try to whitewash things and not tell him where the trillions went, so it's a step in the right direction. Remember when Ron Paul was first in Congress decades ago, 
Uh, he was unable to get one co-sponsor to audit the Fed, but now he was able to pass a good bill through the House, but it was killed in the Senate. So that is a historical move uh, in the right direction. Uh, announced job cuts have risen 212%, and uh, most of the big green jobs were just payoffs to Democratic Party uh, executives. That's now been admitted, including big, quote, test green office parks have now basically laid off their employees. And so that's a 212% uh, increase in job layoffs from a year ago, but still the globalists are telling us that uh, they have basically fixed the economy uh, for us. One more article I wanted to get to uh, is the fact that 11% I saw the other day of Texans have an arrest warrant out for them. 11%. And I've seen reports uh, in Lago Vista outside Austin where I live and other parts of the country where if you aren't wearing a seat belt, they arrest you and take you to jail, even though the statute wasn't written for that. Uh, or if you're speeding, you now go to jail because they somehow get more fines. And I saw an article uh, out of Fox News where it says, auto owners beware, D.C. cops throw drivers in jail for expired tags. Triple A cries foul. And it goes on to say their favorite is women with children because then the CPS gets to grab them. And uh, women driving kids to school or whatever, even if your tags are a few days out, they arrest you and seize your children and then try to keep them. Uh, so the government is literally hunting you. And a lot of people out there can't even pay for the tags anymore. They're bankrupt. Their whole world's falling down. They're trying not to be homeless. It doesn't matter. All over the country, not just D.C., they find one thing. You're going to jail and they're taking your kids because this is literal slavery. The government ships the drugs in. Your kids are dumb enough to use them. They put them in the private prisons owned by big drug cartels that launder their money through major banks. That's come out. Uh, it, it's incredible. Now, we're going to be occupying the real enemy. We're going to be going up against the actual globalists, the enemies of our republic, not some vague attack on people that are part of the free market that these monopoly capitalists are actually enemies of. And we're going to come back uh, with G. Edward Griffin breaking all of this down. But I wanted to go to break with a clip we played a few nights ago of uh, an interview or a question that Luke Radowski of We Are Change <clears throat> was able to ask uh, the man that's worth over $200 million uh, who says capitalism is the problem. Gee, Michael, why couldn't you make your films in Russia or China? Why, did, why couldn't you make them in Venezuela under Hugo Chavez? You know, America's not perfect, but freedom is what produced the culture and the money for you to make $200 million. The truth is, you know exactly what's going on. Your job is with Goldman Sachs and the big banks that finance the fake green movement, the carbon taxes, the austerity, all of it. You know what your mission is. We're going to expose that with G. Edward Griffin coming up. So here's that clip. Michael, what do you think about ending the Federal Reserve banking system, the private banking system? I think there's a larger issue. There's a larger issue to deal with. End the Fed. It's a private bank. End capitalism. That's the problem. The capitalism. Capitalism has to go. InfoWars Nightly News, and we're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Uh, we're going to uh, interview G. Edward Griffin, uh, and then I'm going to continue to interview him after the show and air that on Friday night, because Aaron Dykes is going to be sitting here uh, hosting InfoWars Nightly News weeknights, 7 p.m. Central, at PrisonPlanet.tv, because I'm going to be up in Dallas kicking off the Occupy the Fed movement. So we'll air the second part of this interview with G. Edward Griffin coming up on InfoWars Nightly News uh, on Friday. We're also going to air some excerpts Friday during the radio show that I'll be hosting via Skype from the RV InfoWars Command Pod in Dallas. But we are joined now by G. Edward Griffin. Sir, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for inviting me. Now, you don't need any introduction, but you're the best-selling author of The Creature from Jekyll Island. For close to 50 years, you've been exposing the private banking cartel. And I can't think of anybody out there who explains the pressure from above, pressure from below system. People ask me, why would elite bankers, why would they support communists? Why would they support socialists? Why would they support collectivism? And we see MoveOn.org, the White House, all Wall Street finance, Soros financed, pumping millions into co-opting the Occupy Wall Street movement. That's why I'm calling for an Occupy the Fed. And so I want to get your uh, view on that idea, and if you think that's a good one. And then I want to segue into uh, what Carol Quigley and others wrote about, that you made films about, this pressure from above and below. Why do we see so many billionaires supporting collectivism? G. Edward Griffin. 
Well, you really raised a good point there, Alex, because there's a tremendous amount of confusion today um, between having a lot of money and being wealthy and being a capitalist. Those words need uh, to be defined, don't they? Uh, capitalism does not necessarily mean that uh, you're a, uh, not a socialist. What we have today, let's cut to the chase, is that we have a lot of very wealthy socialists in the world, a lot of very wealthy collectivists. And the old definition of capitalism uh, was more accurate than the new one. The new definition of capitalism is, or a capitalist, is anybody with a lot of money, and that doesn't cover it at all. Because the wealthiest people in the world today are not free enterprise capitalists. They're monopoly capitalists. You need to make that distinction. People make their money today in the world not by free enterprise competition, not by producing a better product at a better price, uh, or anything like that. They make their money today by buying politicians and buying political favoritism and sending their lobbyists into the power centers of the, the legislative power centers of whatever governments there are in the world and getting them to pass special laws that favor them. Money today is made, the great wealth today is made by political maneuvering and favoritism and that is not capitalism. So when people go out there and they say our crisis today in the banking system proves that capitalism doesn't work, they're, they don't understand any of this at all. They, they're still thinking that capitalism is the same as wealth. So you're, you're right on target, I think, especially when you want to emphasize that we need to occupy, not Wall Street. What is that? Wall Street is a, is a, a physical location. It's where a lot of brokerage houses are. It's where the banks are centered. But the real problem is the Federal Reserve System. That's the problem. It's a monopoly. It's a cartel that's been given this monopolistic power by Congress. And it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. It's this marriage between corporations and government. That's not capitalism. That is collectivism in its purest form. So when these people say, let's overthrow capitalism, they, they miss the point because capitalism has been gone, really totally gone in the sense of the word that I'm using it, it's been totally gone since World War II. Well, that's and my point. It, 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 exactly, Gibber. That's what I want you to elaborate on is that even Ross Perot, who claims he's free market, made the lion's share of his money selling EDS to the government. Uh, exactly. You look at all these big fortunes, it's the monopoly power of government. And one of the clearest examples is Barack Obama and General Electric, the head of his economic council. They, th the very day that his new carbon rules went into effect, they were given an exemption, and now they're shutting power plants down all over the country, but General Electric can still operate, and their profits are going way up. I mean, this is so dangerous, and it destroys... It destroys progress, and then to see the monopoly capitalists using collectivism to destroy their, their competition, to consolidate power, to see Michael Moore, who's made hundreds of millions of dollars in the so-called free market system, saying capitalism is the problem, not the Federal Reserve. We have a clip of that we played uh, earlier as we went out to break, and he's saying that's the problem. The problem is capitalism, and so people now think monopoly corruption is capitalism, and they're selling them on more collectivism. I mean, isn't that just putting our leg in a bigger bear trap? Because I remember you well, exactly. decades ago talking about this, this juncture we've now entered, where when the collectivism causes society to implode, the danger is the establishment will use that as an excuse to sell more of the same as the solution instead of getting back to true freedom. So break that down and, and the choice we have between the monopoly capitalist uh, and true freedom. Well, you've said it so well, Alex. Uh, all I can do is uh, go over the same ground, and I think it does need to be repeated over and over again because it's foreign to the ears of, of most Americans. You don't hear this sort of thing on ABC, CBS, NBC, and all that. They, the major news outlets continue to spew out the same old propaganda about this is a capitalist system. Well, it's not. It's a collectivist system. There's not much difference anymore between the system in America and the system you find in in red China uh, or in Cuba or in uh, what used to be called the old Soviet Union or Russia. It, it, they have different labels, but once you peel off the label and look down underneath, you've got bedrock collectivism everywhere in the world today. And you're quite right when you say that the, the advocates of collectiz uh, collectivism who want more, more, and more create a boogeyman. They say capitalism is what's causing all this problem. Let's have more government intervention. Let's have more government control. Let's have more 
more uh, marriage between corporate and state. Let's have these private uh, uh, partnership relationships with the government, you know, all these things. They, they're advocating, as you say, more of the same poison that's killing the patient. They're advocating that is supposed to be the medicine for him. And the only real solution is, first of all, the American people have to understand this little trick that's being played on them. And then they have to understand, well, what is the alternative? It's something that, you know, we haven't seen in America in the lifetime of any of us living today. You have to go back to the history books to find out what the solution is. People say, well, you don't want to go backwards. Well, moving backwards in time would be moving forward in ideology. It would be moving forward in solutions because we would be moving forward to the idea of a free market, not in bed with the government. See, the government loves to come in and say, we're going to regulate these industries for you folks, for the benefit of the population. Uh, you know, but what really happens is that the regulators get into bed with the corporations that are being regulated, and then they become one and the same. And so under this umbrella of supposedly regulating industry and the banks, among other things, another industry, and supposedly controlling uh, the society on the benefit, for the benefit of the people, they're actually just protecting the the corporations under that umbrella. So we've got to get this in our brains that this is the reality of today. And the only solution to this problem is to go forward to where we were about 80 years ago. I mean that literally, go forward to where we were 80 or 100 years ago and get the government out of all of these things, go back to a true free enterprise system where competition is the only thing that will produce the best products, the best service, the lowest prices, the best amount of freedom for the individual. And not that it's not with, it's without problems because of course it does have problems, but those problems are minuscule compared to the problems that we have today. Day, which is a result of government control and regulation supposedly to protect the people, when in fact is to protect the corporations. Well, uh, very well said. Historically, um, here's an analogy to, to you know, be added to what you were talking about, about going forward to the past. Collectivism, centralized gangs, cartels, uh, letter of mark, all of that goes back thousands of years to the king rats, the strong men, the emperors, all the gladiatorial horrors that, and, and, and wars that came along with it. Uh, kill and be killed, uh, just a terrible system. The furthest we ever went was the flower of the Renaissance, uh, the, the, the greatest extension of it, or the Enlightenment, was 1776, 1789, the American true free market, diverse system. Wasn't perfect because we were still reaching towards more liberty. So it'd be like if I was on a trip to say uh, California and I drove to the California line and then drove back to New Mexico, it wouldn't be that uh, you know Dallas was closer to California just because I turned back. I had gotten closer to California by driving to the state line, but I turned back. We want to go back to where we were, which was the furthest that we'd basically uh, gone. I mean, that's an analogy off the top of my head or saying we'd never been to the moon. Uh, we need to go back to actually going to the moon, which is the furthest we've gone because we haven't tried to go forward since then. Well, I think their point is well taken, Alex. Yeah, we have to go forward because what we've been doing for the last 80 to 100 years is moving backward in history. We've been going back to the Middle Ages, to the, uh, to the element of serfdom. By the way, that's uh, what the Club of Rome, as you know, speak to that. They're very conscious about this. They say they want a post-industrial world for the general public, high-tech reservations with the elite and government and corporations, and they say they want us back to a feudal state. I mean, that's official UN Club of Rome dogma. Mm -hmm. Well, they're doing very well. They're succeeding. In fact, I'd say we're all probably more than halfway there already. And the trouble is it's incremental and you get used to it, you know. Uh, every year we lose a, a significant amount of our personal liberties and, uh, and our children coming up have never heard about much of this stuff. So with the passage of a couple of generations, the new generation in place is perfectly content to be living in a feudalist system because they don't know anything better. They think that's that's the way it's always been. And they, they're told, well, you're in America now. This is free enterprise because you're in America, right? This is capitalism, right? Wrong. 
That's the point. And you, you and I are in total agreement on that. But I'm afraid the people out there on the streets today, a lot of them don't understand that. And so they're angry, obviously angry, and they're justified in being angry. And they're saying, you know, let's, uh, let's occupy Wall Street. Okay, that's good. Now what? Now we've occupied Wall Street. What are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. We'll just occupy Wall Street and show them that we're mad. That's it. And somebody will say, okay, uh, then what are we going to do? Get the government involved and take over Wall Street? Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Let's have the government run Wall Street. And of course, that's what they want to do anyway. Wall Street runs the government. Government runs Wall Street. It's the same thing, folks. There's no difference between those two anymore. It's a it's it's a Yeah, mess all it's going to be is, what is, is more of what we've already seen. The big more six megabanks will first further use government to shut down their competition, uh, just like we've seen in every other industry. Uh, it's incredible. And, and we've now gotten the list of demands from the group saying that they're the leaders of Occupy Wall Street run by George Soros. It doesn't reflect the people actually in the street, but the mainstream media is running with the hoax and it's universal health care, free education, uh, $20 an hour, even if you don't work. I mean, the recipe that they've put on the table would drive out whatever jobs are left and fully collapse the system. I mean, That's this right. is so amazing that, that they're giving the, mega the megacorporations exactly what they want, a tool to shut down everybody but them. Right. Whatever's left of the free enterprise system, whatever little increment is left of true capitalism, they're out to destroy it completely. And, well, that's my point. I think the people out there who are justifiably angry about what they see uh, is the responsibility of Wall Street uh, having to do with our economic crisis. Now it comes to the question of what are we going to do about it? They haven't the foggiest idea what to do about it. They're just angry, and they're out there waving their placards, and that's good. But now come along the professionals, as you've so well described the Soros army, and they're telling him now what the solution is, and as you said, and I've said, it's more of the same. So what do we do about that? We've got to reach those people in the streets. They're good people. They want to do what is right. They need education. They need history. They need leaders, true leaders, and I guess that's our role. We're doing our best. Well, I would say we're having success because I've got reporters all over the country uh, Rob Jacobson right now is in New York, and he says the vast majority are Ron Paul supporters in the fetters. They want to claw back the bailout money from Wall Street. They don't w uh, want the, the, the system to be Ponzi scheme controlled, but they're not getting any of the mainstream media attention. So the answer is continue to grow the alternative media, but also we're launching a movement to protest the Fed nationwide to point out that they're the real monopoly men. They're the people that got rid of Glass-Steagall, created derivatives, and that's why I'm calling on people to physically occupy the grounds around the main Dallas Fed. I'm going to be up there Friday, but I want folks to occupy it for weeks. I'm going to go to San Antonio and Houston Fed the days after and then back to Dallas. I'm, I think this is going to be part of the shot heard around the world if we're able to really force the attention off of nebulous Wall Street and the free market as if it's the author of our woes and actually put it on the mega cartel. So um, we're about to end part one of this interview tonight. We're going to continue when the show ends, G. Edward, and uh, tape uh, part two that we're going to air Friday when I'm up in Dallas with Solutions uh, and, and a lot of other key research that you've uh, engaged in. But, but, but right now, what do you think of my idea of occupying the Fed, A, and B, what is the end game of these people if we don't stand up to them and they get what they want? Okay, I think your idea of focusing on the Fed is excellent, okay? But now we're still going to face that problem. A lot of people will go there and they'll say, end the Fed, end the Fed, end the Fed, wonderful. And then the question is, then what? End the Fed, replace it with what? A lot of those same people now are saying, well, we'll just turn it over to the Treasury. We won't complain about the fact that they're creating money out of nothing. We'll just focus on the fact that it's the Federal Reserve creating money out of nothing. And that's bad because those are big, bad bankers. But they say, if we allow our nice, trustworthy politicians to create money out of nothing through the Treasury Department, that must be good. <laughs> well, you see, we haven't, we haven't won yet. We still have to get people to understand it's not not who creates fiat money, it's the fact that anybody is allowed to create fiat money. We'll just so trade out one group of masters for another. We won't even trade them out. They're the same people.
That's the point. The the banks and the treasury are where do they where is the head of the Fed come from now? It comes from the banks, right? It's it's all intertwined. Um, how how long has it been since there's been anybody in in the Federal Reserve System that didn't come from the banking industry? Okay, in part it's all, two, it's all the banking. In part two, we're going to look at the structure of the Federal Reserve that you've written about and get into your solutions. But in closing, in a minute or two. What is the end game of the collectivist? From my research, it's the eugenics operation. Uh, it's this playing God situation. Spend a few minutes on the world we are going to live in, or our children are going to live in, if we don't defeat these people. I mean, how, how big are the stakes here? Well, the stakes are total. And I think the best answer to that question, Alex, is what we've already said. It is their design to return the world to a universal serfdom, a feudalistic system with an elite in control. And the Federal Reserve plays an important part of that, but it's not the only part. I mean, the educational system plays an important part. Anything that can reduce uh, the mental condition of humankind to the point of feeling totally uh, lost, totally helpless, uh, totally dependent upon the government to help them survive. That is part of the plan for people to accept total regulation over their lives and be grateful for it. The more crisis they can develop, the better it is because that means the more grateful people will be for this supposed solution of being protected by an all-powerful Lord and Master. That's why they want to poison us with the chemtrails, the sodium fluoride, all of it. All of that, yes. Yeah, they, they need us to be grateful for what they want to do to us anyway. So, and the way they do that is they just keep crushing us down, creating crises, creating problems, economic disaster, wars, famine, uh, you, you name it. And uh, people will be so helpless and so frightened uh, that they'll accept anything in the name of security. Well, in part two, I want to discuss a great example of problem, reaction, solution, or crisis creation. And that, of course, is Operation Fast and Furious. Wow, that... That is really uh, unfolding. Uh, as we end um, this uh, Wednesday edition of InfoWars Nightly News, J. Edward Griffin, I want you to uh, give out your websites and talk about some of the important work you're doing right now that is part of the solution before part two. But then I want you to add the caveat or the double addendum here, because we are at the end of the interview, on my view that you know, Pol Pot killed anybody who was educated or wearing glasses. They saw that as being upper class to wipe out people that could challenge them. But the globalists with the fluoride and the drugs and everything, they're just wi trying to wipe out our minds and basically turn us into biological androids. Well, yeah, you covered a lot of points there. Uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation to invite people to my websites. Uh, we have several websites, as you know. Our think tank website is called uh, Freedom Force, and it's uh, where we, we lay down strategies and explore strategies of how to take back control of our systems and how to, how to educate and how to uh, mobilize people on behalf of freedom. So that's freedomforceinternational.org. But our commercial site, where we sell books and recordings and videotapes and educational materials, uh, is called The Reality Zone. And that's therealityzone.com. And you'll find about, well, a little over 100 different items there for sale. And we're constantly adding new items. So please come in there. And, and if you want to see what we think about news events, uh, commentary on the news, we publish something every week, as you know, called Unfiltered News. Uh, we even put a few things in there now and then, Alex, uh, from Prison Planet. <laughs> and uh, your excellent work gets in there quite a bit. So it's a free news service, and it's called Unfiltered News. Google it, and you can sign up there. Wonderful. Now, as for the as for the other things, I don't know what to say. Um, yes, uh, they are trying to control our minds and our spirits, uh, our bodies. So they want to uh, control what medicines and foods we take into our bodies. Uh, they control what information we take into our minds. They want to create little robotoids out of us, and you know they're doing pretty well. When you when you go into town and you look at some of these people shopping at Kmart or wherever, wherever you see them and you hear them talking and they're talking about the most asinine, mundane things. And this occupies their lives. They have no idea of anything that's really important. They're all wrapped up with uh, Dancing with the Stars or Saturday football or, or who knows what, you know, and it, these are all entertainment points with them. They need to be entertained and scintillated and tintillated. But uh, these anyway, are these are prisoners 
of the literal of the literal matrix, and we're here to break them out. G. Edwards, stay there. We're going to come right back to you in a moment, but I've got to end this Wednesday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. We're going to come back and tape the second half for Friday, okay? Very good. Thanks a million. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And as I said, we will be back uh, on Friday with the second part of this interview that I'm about to shoot right now. Don't forget, we've got our Occupy the Fed uh, event kicking off in Dallas, but it's happening all over the nation. Please be there. And if you can, be there with a sleeping bag and uh, stay there or come on Saturday or Sunday. And I'm going to be at other branches across the state uh, in, the, in the next few days after that as well. Well, this is so important. If you believe in the type of information you're seeing here and you want to help underwrite it and get it out to more people, we're not like uh, Fox News and MSNBC that get secret banker bailout money or government propaganda funding. We are funded by viewers that want to help get this information out, and that's how we're building this news organization. So I want to thank subscribers to PrisonPlanet.tv and encourage uh, people watching this on other areas of the web to become subscribers at PrisonPlanet.tv uh, or InfoWarsNews.com. I'm Alex Jones signing off. Until tomorrow night, God bless you all.